Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, uh, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. First of all, to, um, uh, I would like to uh, really tell I'm humble I am by being here with Alexei Leonovov. Um, I think that um, this is the type uh, of man that changed the history and the course of history, and, um, and so I'm just uh, very, very humble uh, to be here, and uh, I wanted uh, us to acknowledge him today um, as really one of the greatest men of our history. Um, the courage, the physical courage um, that he had at the time uh, is beyond uh, anybody's imagination to be the first one to actually to walk on space. So um, I'm very happy to meet you in person, um, my dear. I think that you, um, you're really someone very unique. Then um, uh, to uh, Professor Garrick uh, Israelian, um, who uh, is uh, basically uh, the founder of this amazing idea and the reason uh, that I got very excited from the first moment that I heard about it. And of course to Professor Gunnar Bovim uh, from uh, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, an European reference uh, for science. Let me tell you why I'm here and uh, why I think uh, that I've decided from the very first uh, day to uh, support uh, this event. Um, and the reasons are twofold uh, for supporting the event. The first is that um, the recent rise of uh, populism and extremism in Europe um, has taken a toll in all of us that love science. And uh, the populists and the extremists, they just believe that um, science is no, of no need, that you don't need experts, that um, actually you can go around the world by emotions and um, uh, telling things that are not based on scientific evidence. And I'm very afraid of that for my children, for the future of Europe, and for the future of all of us. You know, when uh, in 2016, um, the Oxford Dictionary decided that the word of the year was uh, basically post-truth, I think that we are in a very dangerous terrain. And I think that um, we probably underestimated, underestimated our role and underestimated uh, what we have to do. We thought we took for granted we took for granted that we would take our smartphone and uh, basically this was science, but it was for granted. I mean, this is something that everybody can do. No, I mean, it's not for granted and we cannot take for granted science. So I think that the rise of populism and extremism, that is the battle for politicians in the next 10 years, cannot be just win by politicians. We are not strong enough people don't believe in politicians anymore. And so we need your help. We need the help of scientists. We need the help of people of goodwill. But we need you to be more vocal about it. And um, Starmus is about that, is to being vocal as a scientist. The second point that I wanted, uh, or that excited me about being here today and being part of these, is the fact that um, I believe that the only way that the European Union can survive is by linking people to science. And why do I say this? Because I think that this project, that is this amazing project of peace and prosperity, began with the idea that by getting people uh, a better life, uh, by a geo-economy that will get us better, we will create political union. But it was not enough. The proof is that people don't believe anymore. And people don't believe because we kind of lost purpose, right? Lost purpose of uh, being uh, Europeans. And the only way that you can define a common identity in Europe is about science. Because we are the best of the best. We have the best universities. We have the best fundamental science. But then what happens is that we don't link to, a pe to the people. We don't relate to the story, and we don't tell the story. And I've been for these two years and a half uh, meeting a lot of uh, amazing scientists, 
that do that, that have this ability of linking. But those that do it, they are still a very um, a small part of it. It's a minority of you, a minority of scientists that are able to connect with people. And um, when you look at um, the book of uh, Harari, Sapiens, you uh, really understand how telling stories is important for our survival. I mean, basically, Harari tells us that sapiens survived Neanderthal because they were able to tell stories. And so we should not underestimate the role of telling stories and the role of communication. And we have great storytellers. I mean, in the European Research Council, we have amazing storytellers. I mean, like Edward Mosen and, uh, and, and Mayor Britt, uh, two Nobel Prizes from Norway. We have people that are able to relate, but they have to tell more stories. They have to link with the people. And we have to create mission-driven science where Europeans will understand science. So if you just tell Europeans that we will invest in energy or water or health, they say it's OK. But it doesn't change anything in their lives. You have to relate to them. You have to see we're going to be the first to find a cure for Alzheimer. We have to be the first to actually get to batteries that will have uh, more uh, a duration of five or six years, and you don't have to change batteries every day. That's what people understand. And that's what I think Starmus is about. And so I wanted just to um, conclude with two points. One, to uh, first to acknowledge uh, the importance of the location of the Starmus Festival. Norway is uh, a very, very important partner for the EU. Uh, it's an, uh, an excellent place for science. The track record as an associated country is uh, just um, amazing. It ranks second among all Horizon associated countries. Uh, and you're talking about countries that are extremely good in science, like Switzerland and Israel, and, and uh, uh, Norway ranks second. Uh, moreover, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology is uh, really an amazing institution, and I'm very excited that I'll be there for the first time. Both Norway and Europe have benefited from more than 100 years of science and innovation developed uh, here, and I very much look forward to visiting it uh, next month. But let me finish just with a quick um, story of something that uh, is in my mind for my recent trips. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet one year ago at the Kavli Prize, uh, Alan Alda. Alan Alda is the uh, American actor of, of movies like Woody Allen, uh, series like MASH, for the, the ones that are a little bit older in the room. And Alan Alda created this center uh, in uh, Stony Brook University that I visited about communicating science. And what he does with scientists is an amazing work. He basically puts scientists in a room and does improvisation courses of theater. And so when they come in, um, they normally try to tell the story, but they can't because they were never trained to tell the story of what they do. And he tells an amazing story that at some point he had a, 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 an amazing scientist that was trying to, struggling with the audience to tell what he was trying to, to uh, make it the difference in the world and his job. And he was not able to communicate. And so he went through a quick course of improvisation. And then he asked him the hard questions. How do you explain these to a young kid? How do you explain these to your mother? And, uh, and the scientist, after struggling and after learning this improvisation that actors do so well, he explained it. And the wife of the scientist got on stage and said, my god, it's the first time in my life that I understand what my husband does. Um, and, uh, and I think that's really uh, the highest point that you can achieve, is uh, then when even your wife understands what you do. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, please, uh, really um, uh, sorry for getting a little bit uh, also out of space with a lot of different comments. But um, I'm very excited about uh, this festival. And uh, thank you to all of you for being here and uh, for your uh, friendship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.